This is the Personal Finance Show. Hi, I'm Bo Humphreys, and this is The Personal Finance Show. Angel Jones has conducted over 2,000 interviews since 2016. They were all at least 12 minutes long. In 2016, Angel decided that he was going to do 1,001 interviews in three months using a framework of questions he came up with that take around 12 minutes and are meant to help you discover your own unique real self. He called it 12-minute convos. This was all done from his home in Trinidad with guests from everywhere in the world. Let's think about this for a second. 1,001 interviews divided by 90 days is around 11 interviews per day. When I schedule interviews for the personal finance show, I do one, maybe two per day. Whether it takes an hour or 12 minutes, interviewing someone takes a lot of energy and creativity. When the 1,001 interviews were completed, Angel released a workbook called Your Own Unique Real Self a reflective self-discovery guide, which is now available on Amazon. As if that wasn't enough, in 2017, Angel decided to try it again, this time focusing on interviewing other podcasters. He got to 813 interviews. That's a total of 1,814 conversations in two years. My 12-minute convo was episode 1,437. And as of March 2018, which is the date of the last episode published on iTunes, the episode count is at 1,987. But it doesn't end there. In June of 2018, Angel and his wife Amanda, who is a registered nurse and a published author as well, decided to leave Trinidad and make a 12-week journey across North America to meet and do follow-up interviews in person with as many previous guests as possible. So they're way past 2,000 episodes now. They just haven't been published onto the podcast feed yet. They're all on Facebook and YouTube if you search for hashtag 12 min convos. That's hashtag 12minconvos. The in-person interviews are currently at episode 289, and you can find me on episode 106. It was a privilege to host Angel and Amanda at my home in Hamilton, Ontario, and provide them with a place to stay while on their journey. If you like what they're doing and want to throw them some support, head over to GoFundMe.com slash 12 convos. That's GoFundMe.com slash 12MINCONVOS. Andrew agreed to take a break from being the interviewer for a whole hour to share his personal finance story and how 12-minute convos came to be. The thing that comes to me at first is working for my father. Okay. And uh, I remember working the entire week. And I got paid something like forty TT dollars a day, and this is us in the summertime, yeah, working right. So we're like twelve, and we're doing small things like picking up. So my father did tiles, oh, okay, tile work, yeah. yeah. So we're doing that, and so taking out the spaces, putting in the grout, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, small things. I think everyone can kind of relate to that, yeah, having tiles in their house, right. <laughs> <laughs> so we're doing that. And uh, I remember getting this money, and I was like, wow, <laughs> I did all of that work, and this is what I get? <laughs> like, it, was, it wasn't it was even enough. I didn't think it was. It didn't feel like it was what's enough. Like, do you got it, what's an exchange rate? Like, 40 uh, uh, for Trinidad Canadians dollars? To Canadian. Or uh, American. Well, U.S., seven to one. Okay. Yeah, well, that's so normal. So, you're working a whole day for, like, six dollars. <sighs> <laughs> that makes it feel even it was better. Worse. So why do we, I'm sorry. I yeah. used math in a, in a poor way yeah, it to hurt. help you. It hurt. It didn't help you at all. It didn't, but it's relative, though. It's <laughs> relative, right? Yeah, because oh, things cost. The less, cost of living hopefully is less. a lot yeah, lower. What, what, what are you doing with money at this at point, though? Why do you need more or less money? What at are you, that age? For more candy? <laughs> but how, no. old are, how old are you? So this is me... 13, I think. 13, 13? 14, yeah. Girls? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I can't I can't take a girl. Okay, wait. You don't seem like you're very... Maybe you might even be younger than me. 
I'm not sure. I am now. I was born in eighty three, seven, ninety, seventeen, thirty five in August. Yeah, I was born in eighty. Wow, yeah. you look. Uh, I'm great. gonna be thirty eighth. <laughs> that's, that's the only reason I ever bring up my age. Yeah, you for look someone good. to say that. <laughs> and thank you. Thank You're you welcome. for that. It's the long hair. I'm sure. Well, no, no. I've seen other it's older just, people. I just young. feel like I I do feel younger. I feel yeah. like honestly, I feel like I. I went back a whole decade once I recovered uh, from the gambling and started living my life. I feel like it kind of just started over. Mindset is interesting, isn't it? It's fascinating. It's it's like now I feel because like feeling young, feeling young is way better than being young, yeah. <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Definitely. Like I don't know, being twenty again that that's awkward stuff, man. Very awkward. Yeah. So it's I- like being twenty again, but knowing all the stuff that you know. It's oh, like, that wouldn't be fun. It's great. I think it's good. To but like, not... I guess that's what 30s. Are yeah, like. yeah. That's, it. that's yeah. what the 30s are for. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you're 13. I have this money. And you have, <laughs> so maybe 50 bucks. Maybe you got 50 bucks for a week. What can I do with that? Yeah. What are you going to, like, uh, this is the 90s. So, hmm. you know, everything's, I feel like everything's very similarly priced. You can go to movies for five bucks, maybe. Right? Yeah. Or maybe four twenty five or something like that. Yeah, like and so you can yeah. take someone to the movies. We're in the nineties, right? Yeah. Yeah. Was three it five dollars? bucks? Three, three. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, different in Trinidad, of yeah. course. Yeah. And it's good. You get two movies in, yeah. But I think really the thing that affected me is going to school. I think that because that was the comparison and allowance, right? Mm. So if I worked, then I can get and on the upside of my allowance, right? Yeah. And here it is, I get this money and it doesn't do what my other friends yeah, have what, access what to. were they doing they were getting a better they're allowance. doing like and yeah just allowance like not even working to get the money so right? would you are you growing up in a, a sort of a middle class or yeah, yeah. so like it, are your friends even wealthier yeah then? okay so like you just happen to go to the same school as them but their parents maybe make more money yeah okay so that's yeah that's hard like how how do we how do we deal with that, right? Like, I'm sure a lot of people are, you know, maybe you get a scholarship to a private school and you're going to school with, like, people who uh, live in mansions. Yeah. Did and it that feel happened. like that? Yeah, it happened. So I, I lived in the countryside. Okay, yeah. Uh, did pretty well. Got into this high-end school in the middle of a city. Okay. Yeah, exactly So this did that. happen. Yeah, it did happen. Yeah, do you, so you're feeling the first, that we talked about the Beyonce factor. <laughs> yeah, just <a> <laughs> You're feeling ago. the first inkling of this. Yeah. And how did it make you feel? What did you What did you do? Well, it was funny. I think I um, I put things in place. You like, oh you uh, yeah, I put you hustled. In, yeah, I love to hustle. My father taught me how to hustle. Mm-hmm. Like he was hustling. That's why we were working with him on the side job. So he had his day job, which was a shift system: two seven to threes, two three to elevens, two eleven to sevens. And meanwhile, he's hustling. Wow, on the side after all this shift work. <laughs> wow, that guy in, in, in the tile in the tile factory yeah, or the tile work. So this is oh, him so, yeah. taking construction and doing. So he already had these skills from his day job, and he just <laughs> well, no, this no. is him every time. Like he's been doing fabricating he's the jack of all he trade. just gets like the whole construction sort yeah, of thing or renovation which is pretty cool to see in action yeah because yeah. hey this is a new floor down here and it took the guys forever to put this together and it looks great it almost looks like wood it's but it's like a it's a tile right i mean you seem to know something about tiles so yeah i saw your it, tiles the first <laughs> time i came in. <laughs> <laughs> and uh but before it, it was just these crusty uh well, that's the stuff that's in the laundry room over there. It's not very nice. Can you see it from here? Yeah. Yeah. It's just like linoleum or whatever, yeah, linoleum. old school stuff. You, what did you do to hustle? Well, what was your... One of the things I did, so one of my friends who is actually a pilot now, he started this journey on the podcast with us being by him, right? So okay. He would get a week allowance. What? What does that mean? Like a so whole... he would get the entire week on Monday. Oh man! Yeah. Okay. And I'm so getting he's investing a this daily amount, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I would use his money. That's where the borrowing started. Wow! You started. This, uh, is this at 13 or 14 this or whatever? Is, yeah. This is me secondary school. Yeah. A daily allowance, and he has a weekly allowance. So you're lending. I'm borrowing. You're borrowing. Okay. Wait. So, because he's getting weekly, you're borrowing from his big amount because he yeah. doesn't need all of it right yeah. away. Ah, and smart. then I could live the life, right? But <laughs> I, I, it's, it's, I think I could live the life. Yeah. But I never catch up. 
No, of course. <laughs> <laughs> the surprise. Yeah. Uh, but you didn't realize this till what? Did you start breaking your legs or Gee, what happened? I think like 30, 30. I didn't realize it until I was 30. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you just kept, you started borrowing from your friends, not been maybe not able to pay them back. And so what do you get? I don't know. They, they had payday loans and uh, Oh, no, or, it wasn't that bad. No, you didn't nah. get that far, but your you credit cards. Loan and, forgiveness, you okay. know, between friends. So you're saying this just, you kept going with the, uh, with with borrowing as much as you could to so let, let me help you life. with that yeah, so please. we would we would borrow i would borrow yeah. and then i would hustle and then make up the money uh, okay yeah? okay yeah and but would you ever get ahead sometimes sometimes yeah but it was just to fund so yeah what would you do for hustling well what what do you what are you finding <laughs> I'm out doing you the can entire do work, right okay so that you know how to do that right so i'm doing that on the weekends yeah and I make some money, mm-hmm. and then I'm able to pay him back the next okay. Monday. Got it? It sounds terrible. It, it, but, it does. But it was so you could have money whenever you wanted. Exactly. To live that life, to be able to access the cheese sandwiches. <laughs> You're like, I want a cheese sandwich. I want a cheese sandwich. I don't want to wait for my cheese sandwich. I don't want You lunch. know, it's it's common. You know, replace cheese sandwich with something else. Yeah. But people just don't want to wait. How do we learn this? Just by living, by by learning, becoming wise? How do you learn delayed gratification? Failure. They, yeah. You tried to get it instant and it didn't work. So what, what, do you have a first instance of failure or did it just all kind of happen at once? Yeah, I would fast forward directly to what happened at the company I was working with. Okay. So we had a three-month strike. Oh, wow. Okay. Ouch. Yeah. Was this, was your, this was your daily, were you at paycheck yes. to paycheck sort yes. of situation? Yeah. Yes. So this... And you didn't get any sort of relief during the strike? You just, no, no income. This is zero dollars. No union stuff? No. Nah, the union the is union. there. It's yeah. legal. Sure. So we won't be fired. Yeah. And that was it. But you don't get any stipends? No. Or, hmm. Ooh, stipend would have been. They did offer a stipend that we got. Yeah. Just to be. Like for food or. <laughs> it was like 800 TT. Yeah. Somewhere like two and a half months into the strike. Because it it was going on for so long. Yeah. So and how long ago was this? This is 2013. Okay. February. Okay. So the five 27th. years ago, a little over five years. February. But you have the date. What time? 2013. <laughs> it was like 20 past 10. <laughs> I was in the lab, and the guy said, "Strike action." I was like, "So what do you do?" Well, what are you doing at this time? Not tile stuff. Lab testing. Okay. Lab testing for what? For what? Cement. It's for cement. Okay. Yeah. So that it would be like. To the best test the strength, yeah. So that it would last for years, and that people could pass tests and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's like American standards, yeah. Uh, that oh, yeah, we're sure. testing yeah. with, and then they're British standards. Okay. Yeah. So the cement needs to be a certain strength. Yeah. yeah. When we make mortar cubes after one day, three days, well, three days, seven days, twenty days. Oh yeah. So we prepare that, and then there are other things that we do to ensure that the cement is meeting requirements. And did you learn this in school? I did not actually. No, did you yeah. go to a college or university? I did not. No, I so started working. Yeah, in yeah. the cement, uh, in the cement lab. How do you how do you get a job like that? Right. So my father worked at the cement factory. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then yeah. I got entry into the cement factory. Uh, there's like a pool, and there's called there are casual workers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and casual workers do any and everything. Every, anything so you got to did you get to do everything any in the and everything from wow. shoveling yeah shoveling do it because in Trinidad there are two parts of the cement production there's yeah. the quarry sure yeah and course. then usually you get the rocks from somewhere cement, right cement plants have uh, the next step with the kilns right there where they burn the limestone okay it's all so it's all right there right do they always build it right next to the quarry usually However, in Trinidad, it's really far away. Oh, okay. So one guy came up with the idea, here, let's put water with the mills, yeah. grind it to a slurry, yeah. and then pump it down oh, to the so coast, there's and a whole, then burn it. There's a whole pumping thing between the quarry and the yeah, factory, is that right? Yeah, okay. which is fascinating. Yeah, it yeah. is. So then, so we did that. So I worked at the quarry first. Okay. That makes sense. Shoveling rocks. Oh my gosh, I shovel like rocks. Like for what, a year or something? Or how long? Probably like two years. Two I years, think. you just like, this is ex- hard labor. But the money was so good. Yeah. Like really, really good. Like are the risks to you, like, like dust and things like that, or, or just... It's a monopoly. 
right? That's it. You're it's, just doing it's a this. one cement company <laughs> in Trinidad, right? So, so it's just like I, I just feel like this is a movie ready to be made here. You're like the it's the the you factory. You should have seen me, my friend. <laughs> like I could really sh- and like you see the ceiling here. I'm shoveling stuff from here and train it up on the belt on that level, and you know, but. I'm looking at it. So you're strong. You're like I'm pretty strong. Yeah. I'm the thinnest, strongest guy. You know, <laughs> yeah. like you're. But at this point in your life, you're like probably the strongest you've ever been to be able to handle this on a daily basis. I'd, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, I was fit, and that's how I looked at it. And mindset. Okay, is yeah, so powerful. no, that's good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm being paid to work out. Let's get it done. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's probably how a lot of uh, personal trainers uh, feel. think, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? This is what I was going to do anyway. I yeah. love the gym. Yeah, I get paid for this. Okay. So I did that, and then an opening came up in the lab, got into the lab, uh, worked there casually, employed for a couple of years, mm. and then a permanent position. You know, these things song, right? Like gold, right? Then yeah, yeah, I guess they are, yeah. Thing. Position. You're set for life. Ooh, set for life, right? And was that the mentality at the time? Like, I'm good. This is what I'm doing. I'm no. getting paid. Uh-uh. No. What I, are you doing with this money? You're met now. You're making money. Right. Are you spending it, saving it? I'm saving. Yeah. How much? Like, are you able to save a good chunk and still uh, enjoy yeah. your life I've, at this time? Yeah, I'm saving. But of course, the things like we spoke about need to be bought, right? So I need to get the car. I yeah, need to yeah. have the latest clothes. Okay. Of course. I yeah. mean, I'm working for good money. This is a small percentage of my life. Yeah. yeah. Status stuff. Yeah. But you, but you still were able to save you just a, maybe a little yeah. bit. Yeah. 10% it's or something. Yeah, it's something my father always okay. taught us. Yeah. Did it was like it was I was doing like 35, 40%. Okay. Uh, That's awesome. So... So this is where it came from. Like yeah. I did three envelopes. So th- that would be the internet, if I'm not mistaken. I would give my parents money. Okay. And then I had to spend money. And what I would do is, let's say the internet is 300 TT a month yeah. back then. I would put away 75 every week because okay. I was weekly paid. Yeah. So that was great. You're, you're, make, you're always going to have your internet. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> the, the, the thing is, the money that I was making, right? Yeah. It it was big money per hour, but it was like one day, two days. Ah, I see. Okay, yeah. so it wasn't so, it wasn't every day. No. Not until you got full time later. Well, or permanent. Just right. after a year, it started yeah. to become a lot because okay. I was working pretty hard. Yeah. So the all shifts liked me. So okay, they called me out. And then I did away with the envelopes because I would always be like, <laughs> I could do I that in one week. Those? Yeah, in one week I could burn do that, those right? Envelopes. And I did that. Did you burn them literally? No, but <laughs> you know, they just collected dust, right? Yeah. Because I could do that. And that's where the dong, like that dong ride started. Because you stopped tracking things and all, then you. I would spent, say preparing. Yeah. Because okay. tracking. Tracking is a big word in finances, mm. yeah, and I think it goes with your personality. I think it's the most important word, but you're right, man. Not everybody wants to do that. It's not not <laughs> budgeting. You're not telling yourself how to spend. Just watching what you do spend. Yeah, and still, that's no fun. It's not fun. No, okay. Yeah, because that it, that is accountability. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like taking our vitamins. I know it's good, but every day. <laughs> yeah. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. You're right because that's all people need sometimes accountability, but it feels like somebody's controlling you. Yeah, it does. And if you don't want that, then it's the worst thing. Yeah. So, we so did. you're a free spending. What a, you're living your life. Yeah. Is this like the high, highest point yeah, of your like I think working so. life? I think so. Bought my car, my first car. Yeah. But I needed to borrow money, right? So I have some savings. Sure. But I needed to borrow money because this is the best car in the world, right? The name of it, it was a Honda Legend. Oh, right? a Legend. Yeah. You're like, I'm a legend. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the guy, the guy got out of this car. <laughs> so in you're pretty, you're like, uh, you're pretty happy at this point. You're, yeah. you're having a, you're like, well, you think that you're happy. I wasn't. You weren't, okay. So you were I not. I felt happy. as though I was not fulfilling my full potential. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. What did you feel? You like more than the the labor that you're doing, like that kind of potential? Yeah, it felt well meant business. For something more. I wanted to do more. Sure. I wanted to make more money. Yeah. Yeah. Via business, like I always had this passion that my business would mean it's my time. Mm, yeah, of course. Yeah. So I start. I actually sold my first car to start my first official official business you sold the legend i sold the legend <laughs> man is that painful it was painful yeah you got to get a smaller car or you didn't have a car i traveled okay so 
well, okay, let's get back to the strike. Sure. So <laughs> big story. The right? strike. You know, I we need to know how you got to the cement factory. But so now you're there. You're work. You get to the lab. You're in the permanent thing, and then somebody says strike. February twenty seventh, twenty seventh, two thousand thirteen. That never leaving. Ten past something. Ten twenty. <laughs> yeah, they say this is gonna be striking. You're like, my life is over. Ah, uh, I was no. They were like, it's going to be one week or two weeks. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> so we go out there. We pitch the tents. You know, we're singing union songs. Yeah, we yeah. Shall overcome. Yeah, right? sure. All yeah. the standards. Right. Someone played classical gas on the guitar. <laughs> 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 Whatever, all the folk songs, something by Bob Dylan, yeah, maybe some Bob Marley, Bob all Marley. the Bobs, yeah, all the Bobs. <laughs> and then one week passes, two week passes, and then I'm realizing, okay, I need to reassess this. So we went in, uh, we did things. My wife was working still; she's a nurse. My father. Uh, is there with us. He, as well, is on strike, right? Oh, because oh, he's, yeah, he got yeah, you the job. Of yeah. course, it's all connected. And then one day I was at home, right? So my son is home because sending him to daycare isn't making sense, right? Mm-hmm. I'm going down to the strike camp sure, every yeah. day isn't Can't making sense. Cannot yeah. afford it. Yeah. So I'm lying on a, gr- a rug just like this, looking at the TV, and uh, this guy comes on. The TV is randomly on, I think. And uh, this guy called Benny Hinn is interviewing Rabbi Daniel Lapin. Okay. He wrote a book called Thou shall prosper. The Ten Commandments to making money. Okay. Sounds like religious and capitalists all at once. <laughs> or are they just using the it religious does framework? Sound like that. I didn't <laughs> care. It just it was like I just felt like if there's any time I needed to know sure. about making money, it was now. And you have the time to pay attention. Well, it caught my attention because I was in a like this depressed mood. I'm lying on the ground wondering what is it worth? Like what what am I doing here, yeah. right? And that comes up. So I listen to the interview, get the book at the end of the interview, <laughs> right? Get my sister's Kindle, buy the book. <laughs> of course, around this time, I'm reading a bit, but not that much, right? Okay. Get the book, read the book, right? It's like, Beginning oh, it's like, oh, this is good. So Just he's it up. he's trying out the Jewish model, okay, which is intriguing, right? That you interviewed in episode number 38, which was this Jewish guy, right? Yeah. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the Jewish model of making money and the principles that go with it. Yeah, yeah. And then at the end of the book, he says, hey, if you're looking for the tools on how to manage money, check out Dave Ramsey, the total money makeover. Dave Ramsey, yeah. I'm like, oh, these guys guys know how to sell books (laughs) i'm falling into a rabbit hole here (laughs) why okay so you went about uh, dame ramsey book so my friend came with his credit card (laughs) so that i could buy this first book right you're like i just need to buy books i was like like, should i need books Ah, i hit the buy button as long as you're reading reading a book it was good dave ramsey total money makeover okay that was it so, so what did, what did this book for those who haven't read it or haven't heard of it? What did this it it did do to something you? in terms of it was it laid out a process that I, it was achievable in small steps. Mm, so yeah, yes, seven baby steps. Yeah, huh? save your emergency fund. Yep, clear that smallest balance to the largest balance. Totally. Then save an emergency fund of three to six months. Love it. All right. Then save fifteen percent towards your retirement. Very smart. Then start the college saving. Then start putting extra money towards the house payment. College saving for you or for kids? The kids. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And then, then house, yeah. Then the house. And then seven is like all everything is completed, all going on, and you build wealth and give. Okay. Like the giving is uh, is sometimes very important for people. Yeah. In his process, however, you give right through from the beginning to the mm. ending. Yeah, he builds it where you're giving, saving, then paying bills. Okay. So I'm into this thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. After fighting with budgets all my life and the consistency, I'm like, yeah, this is good. <laughs> now I need to convince the other half. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but because how are you going to achieve this? Exactly. Because I'm not working and yeah. I need my wife on board because he's talking about all these things like, you know, two of you need to be on the same page and how you yeah. relate with money. It is money. important, relationship and money. And here we go. And she's making the money right now. And, here, and she's fed up of me, right? <laughs> because here I come, Amanda, 
we need to do this. Yeah. And I remember it like it was yesterday. She's at the kitchen. She's watch it, washing dishes. And um, I come, hey, we need to do this. And she looks over at me in this <laughs> eye like... And she's quiet, like you've seen her. Right? This is this is this is fun because I just met her, yeah. and so I can picture all of this. Yeah, because she looks over like in this eye of not another thing. Yeah, right. And then I just back off because <laughs> <laughs> she's stressed. Right, she worked the entire day. She's in a nursing sure. uniform, and she's washing dishes. She's I'm trying like, to pay the bills. Exactly. Not thinking about building wealth. Exactly. Yeah. So she actually decides to read it. Okay. But his book is really written well in that there are testimonies from individuals who actually did what okay, he, good, he good, subscribes yeah. to. And she actually said, yeah. So fast forward, I start to work again. Okay. Three months is over. So you're able to make it through the strike. It was hard. It actually gave you opportunity to figure some stuff out. Yeah. It gave you a break. You might have just been working and not thinking about this stuff at all. Yeah. Delayed this whole part of your life. I wouldn't have probably been here yeah you might have never come here so so you're back now but you your mind is is changed we start we we set up we we the first step build an emergency fund yeah yeah five hundred thousand us here we go Perfect. i sell my son drum kit yeah oh drum kit did. corn what did he think <laughs> he was like, too no. small okay good. Yeah. He, was, uh, he was too young to have a drum kit in the first place uh, I'm not sure about that. You just wanted him to try it out. Yeah. Okay. But, I mean, the focus now is if I can live like no one else now, later I can live like no one else, That's right? right. That's right. I like that. So here we go. Yeah. And boom, I'm there. And she's on board. And we take envelopes. And we, we have utilities. And we have all of these things packed into envelopes, right? Is that what Dave Ramsey recommends? Cause he does. I like the envelope system, the jars. We have uh, a oh, Canadian really? person, uh, Gail Vazoxlade. She does... Uh, jars and that she had a show called till death do us part mm. which is uh Play about couples right uh and you'd be surprised you know two doctors hmm. and they're in like three hundred thousand dollars in debt yeah. right so it's like the jars are, are her first step so you yours is envelopes and they really work right they work the yeah. first month we cash flowed something like eight hundred dollars and it's like you have all these envelopes and we're, well it was it was a bit shameful because we're going to the grocery store i have one right pocket envelope one left pocket <laughs> front envelope two back pockets right that's and the thing about envelopes yeah. yeah but he has a really nice thing system that he developed but i'm like no we aren't spending money on anything right oh we well, yeah you can't go there you got to live your life exactly yeah. so we bought the envelopes we did that and we started doing things like eating rice and peas on monday and then peas and rice on tuesday oh, and then on wednesday <laughs> rice and peas rice uh, rice comma peas Duh. <laughs> and then thursday rice and peas again <laughs> and then friday was like the special day the family just union. peas rice and peas <laughs> yeah, so. um maybe y'all puree together and uh, yeah she's the best made peace into burgers. <laughs> we didn't you see you should have <laughs> you been there me for you creativity me, you yeah. know when i was in peru i swear i had a, a meal that was like three different kinds of potatoes <laughs> and they look like different stuff and i'm like yeah that's potatoes too and that's <laughs> potatoes no that's where potatoes are from right peru like there's like three hundred five thousand different kinds of potatoes or something like that like purple ones see, but that was good for you though eating all of no, those carbs? no oh, okay. i don't think so but uh f that's what they're used to more so and you know we have this this protein focused uh, eating uh, that's not absolutely necessary all the time but i just feel like i always need to have meat with my mm -hmm. meal but maybe potatoes once a week would be fine. Yeah. But how did the, like, did you guys, well, you wouldn't get scurvy or anything, but because no. uh, you had the peas. Yeah. <laughs> but this Protein. is all starch. Yeah. So I'm playing. We didn't do so much rice right, so and yeah, peas. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you but, cut down. You, you at least uh, focus. You're tracking. We your, stopped buying your groceries. Outs outside. We weren't Were you buying. eating out a lot before? Mm, just a bit. But like, everything counts. It, yeah. Like, every it does. dollar really counts. Counts. what were you actually or you just weren't paying attention you're spending before i was paying attention i'm an entrepreneur by nature yeah uh, but paying attention mentally is never enough mm, that's a good point accountability either from people like maybe a an advisor or coach or envelopes or writing it down and so yours was would you have to write all this stuff down yeah, so at the beginning of the month, we made a plan for our money, yeah. which was the biggest move ever. 
So we'll put income and then every single dollar we would apply uh, yeah. to a category. Yeah. And then we would put the things that we spend every day in envelopes, for example, fuel or if we needed to do snacks or his or her money, right? According to where we were in the process. Yep. Then we would apply that process to life. So Amanda is the person who she's not such of a giver. I am a natural giver. Okay. So my give envelope would always be empty. And Amanda's <laughs> give envelope would always be filled. Who are you giving money to? Random, the gas pump guy, you know. Just, just extra. I would just do random. Some kind, very random kindness. I love giving. Sure. Yeah. It's nice. Because okay. you get, re- is it because you get money in return or your karma? It does work. Right? It does. It, in some amazing ways as well. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, I am actually situated in Canada by a guy who I spoke to on a right? podcast. Yeah. Like, Because you reached out to me on LinkedIn because you're trying to do this awesome thing, putting, what, well, it was podcasters at the time you were reaching yeah. out to. Yeah. And how many, you got, what is it, 800 or something like that? Yeah. It's 11, 813. 813 yeah. interviews with podcasters or, or yeah. bloggers or both. Yeah, yeah I think we did w- the, we did 813, but it varied. At, uh, we probably got like 700 podcasters. It, it doesn't matter. If it was yeah. like 300, that was really <laughs> crazy. Uh, you're, already, you're already past the point where it's like, oh, but I only did seven, not well, eight. Well, you know, just for the point of the giving, <laughs> though, like yeah. not to lose that, that was really something that works in ways that isn't like, okay, if I give here, yeah, I'm going to get. Yeah. No, you're right. It worked in ways that it's mysterious. It is mysterious. Yeah, or uh, mystical. That's better. Is that a better <sighs> word? Because mysterious involves some kind of subterfuge. And <laughs> it's magical. Magic. I like magic. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. You're doing this Dave Ramsey method, which I mean, there's a bunch of different methods. Like of course, this, but you just happen to get the Dave Ramsey one, and it's working for you. Wow, did it work? And so Stop. how long does it take to get to like the goals that you had set? Like in 11 years? months, we paid off $217,000. What are you kidding me? Yeah, I'm telling Was you. there like a big event in there that I you did had... sell property. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you had uh, mul- some, some, you were trying to build wealth yeah. with property, yeah. which is a, not a bad way to do it. But this one, uh, but you had other debt. Yeah. So that doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> well, get, well, it, c- it could, it, it could. could have, Yeah. but the, De- I got phenomenally dedicated to this thing. Mm. Like, I didn't just want to be the guy that went halfway into yeah. it, which adds up a bit, right? Like, I'm the highly driven guy. Now that I just, just as I said that, I was like, right, yes, because I'm the guy who speaks to so many people in so much That's time. Right. Yeah. So, if you're going to pay off debt, I'm going to pay off yeah. debt. Yeah? <laughs> you're going to pay off like 2,000 people worth of debt. <laughs> To make a really weird <laughs> comparison to your interviewing, uh, <laughs> but that's how that's how you roll, right? It's who I am. It's who you are. So, hey, lucky for you that you found this thing, this method that that kind of resonated with you, because you paid off. That was that all your debt? Yeah, we paid off everything. What year is this now? This is twenty fourteen. Okay, so so we're back four years ago in. Fr- February 2014. Yeah, I think February. June, June 2014. I think. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah, we got finished. We started in June, and I believe in May, like May 30th, we got so 11 months. Yeah. So now, now what do you? You got a whole bunch of cash that doesn't need to go towards that. Yeah. So, so what then are you doing with that? Dave Ramsey comes up with this conference that he has, right? Oh, okay. But now I'm phenomenal. I'm selling Dave's books. I'm I'm like, I'm coaching like people. Like you're an evangelist? Are you, uh, yeah. Are you became, working for the Dave? This is the no, other program? This is, yeah, he has programs. Yeah. And this is me just like, I you want just, to help everyone. Yeah. Please, you need to understand that you can become financially yeah, free. Yeah, you'd be a good evangelist for sure. You like, could I mean, see me, non- right? Religious or non-religious. <laughs> you can, uh, you know, I like think of an evangelist as someone who's uh, promoting somebody's products because they really believe, or promoting something because they really believe in it, not yeah. because of any gain to them. Uh, there might be a gain to you, but yeah. maybe you don't even care. Right? No. Well, technically, you want people te- to. No, I I still have that entrepreneurial okay. part. So, of but me. your your passion, but yeah. 
there are times I would give away books when I should sell the books, sure. right? Because, yes. But you know it's going to come back to you somehow. Well, interestingly enough, my friend, the what you just said there is pretty powerful mm. by saying evangelism. And that, yeah. is what it, that is what it is. I mean, evangelism, unfortunately, has a connotation of a religious background. That is true. And, it, and the scammers, too. Yeah. Right? Like, well, I like what you're doing with, with words. Yeah. Because some p- words have been taken and used in a way... Where that is what it is. For example, explosive. Yeah. I think e- expressions should be explosive. But if you say explosive, it immediately carries someone into an, an image, a yeah, thought process. Blowing somebody up. Yeah, right. Yeah. But you're right. We uh, Let's take the words. It's some words, we, uh, uh, unfortunately, we have to leave in the past mm. <laughs> or leave in whatever they're, you know, because they're so negative and yeah. we can't reclaim them for anything. Mm. But yeah, something like explosive or evangelism. It's uh, let's make them positive. That's yeah. explosive. That's that's amazing. It's yeah. it's like blowing up. You're <laughs> right. It's yeah. That's my passion. Fireworks yesterday. Did you see some? No. No. Was, I had fireworks in a conversation. Hear some. I heard some. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're gonna hear it on Canada Today for yeah, sure. Yeah, I did. We were in London. We did hear some. Yeah. yeah. You just well, it sounds like gunshot. Sounds like explosion. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't know what it is, then it's a little frightening. Yeah. But yeah, so you're telling everybody about this. Yeah. Of course. You're you're your time is valuable, so you're trying to make uh, money off. How are you making money by telling people? Well, I'm selling books, yeah. one. And then I started. What, like wholesale? You get them from? Uh, yeah, so uh, I got them wholesale, yeah. right? Uh, nice. So I would buy a box of books. Of course, my finances have freed up now, so I could invest. You can invest a little Makes bit. Makes sense, right? Yeah, it so does. I could buy a box of books. At but you're, you got your emergency fund. Yeah, of course. Yeah. The emergency <laughs> fund is ripe. <laughs> Which changes you're like your waiting for emergency? Oh, like yeah, Give you me come my way, <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden, the emergency stop coming. Yeah, that's funny how it works, right? Yeah, that's true. That, that is how it happens when you're ready. Yeah. yeah. So Dave has this big thing, right? Called uh, Entree Leadership, right? Okay. It's in Tennessee. Now, after the first month, right, when we did our budget and all of that, I cash flowed enough money to apply for my American visa. And I said, I'm mm. fed up with this company. I'm not going back, right? <laughs> I'm going to get my visa and I'm leaving the country. Okay. My entire family, myself, my wife and I, were there, right? So three of us, sorry. My wife, my son and I. And here we go. Visa office. We apply. Everything is like, it's, yeah. I have to do it now, right? It's happening. I book the next day, the night before. We're in immigration office. We get up there, and I'm blanked. They say no. Oh. The guy doesn't even ask for my property. He doesn't ask anything. What? He's just like, what, what disqualifies you? He, no, he didn't say anything. Oh, you don't get an explanation? I don't get an explanation. Oh, that's the worst. We come down the road. We're si- we, say, we usually say we come down the road, right? Yeah. Which means we drove down the road. Sure. We're sad. Silence. Yeah, pin yeah. drop. So Dave comes with his event, right? Amanda and I said, hey, let's focus on the same plan we were focusing on before. Yeah. And we went on. Fast forward, we get out of that. Dave has this big event, 10 grand on your leadership. Ooh, not me. That's too much. It is a lot. November, like August comes around, someone drops out. They send me an email and... And they say that um, the ticket price has dropped considerably, right? Like half? 4500 Okay, okay. It's like, ooh, I could take, you know, I could, right? I could take a dip here. Like how long would it take to make that back, you're thinking? Uh, well, I have the money now. You already, yeah, you I have it. I actually have the money, yeah. right? So, so, But I needed to get my visa. Oh, you still needed a visa. Together. Why do you need a visa for this? Well, this is Tennessee. Yeah, but you can't even, oh, you, you just for travel though, like tourism. Yeah. Yeah, so okay. here we go. Okay, so yeah. I need to apply again. I applied. And I think this story sets the value of what we were speaking about. Like when you have the emergency fund, your posture changes, your yeah. confidence changes. Yeah. Went up to the embassy. I remember the guy asking me, um, so Mr. Jones, what has changed in the last year? Yeah. You were denied whenever, whenever. And I'm like... A lot has changed. <laughs> <laughs> I could see them thinking you're a liability if you have debt and, and you're going to maybe to escape yeah. from that. So, yeah. So, that changed. They, they knew. I'm not sure. The U.S. government knows things, right? They didn't even, like, they just could tell they didn't even ask to see your papers or Yeah, anything? no. But this time I got through. Hmm. November. Okay. 
And I went to a Dave's thing really to see if it's really possible to live and have a business out of debt. Sure. Wow, was I fascinated by this well, guy. Yeah. You're eating this thing up. You spent 4500 You got out of your country by magic. <laughs> Drove for the first time in Florida. Okay. Right? Yeah. Got got a little touch from a friend. Yeah, this is how you drive. Sure. Traveled to Tennessee. You right? drove for the first time. In Florida. But what, how's it different from... Uh, it's Australia? We drive on the right side. You do right on the other side. side. Okay, yeah. like uh, we we're going to do it in Australia. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, or Scotland. Yeah. Yeah. So got in the car, and the roads aren't as huge as what... Well, I guess is, not, eh? Yeah. This is a monster, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then we, we, you know, I got there, got to Tennessee, rented the car, <laughs> went to the event, right? It was good, though. It was like a four-day event yeah. that came with hotel, stay, and so sure. it made sense, right? <sighs> We're working from seven to seven on content. Yeah. yeah? It was. Is, everybody there is like into this. This is teaching. Serious people. This is teaching. Right? Yeah. This, is, this is real. Real. Value. Yeah. Well, well put. But the, the the entire model, Bo, is that all of this was possible because I got out of that. Yeah. And seeing what Dave built without having that as well was a reality. Why, th- why is that such a, a, a burden to progress? That's a very good question. I think mindset. If I had to put one thing on it, I think mindset. I think it's very challenging to go in one direction when there's something pulling you in another direction. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously freeing up your cash flow too, but you're right. It's like this big hole yeah. that you're trying to, oh, I guess, dig out of. Dig out of. <laughs> yeah. You're trying to climb, but the, the hole maybe just keeps getting bigger with interest, yeah. maybe, if that's what's happening. Mm. Or it's just there. You You can't do a lot of things when you have this commitment like you couldn't leave your country yeah because of this debt like that's a powerful example right there there's no direct proof of this right that it was your debt (laughs) but that seems irresponsible Mm. on the surface doesn't it yeah there are people that have gotten their visas that have debt Mm -hmm. i think the fact that we started clearing out our debt and moving things around really indicated that we didn't want to be in the country anymore. Interesting. It's my guess. Positive. It's kind of a positive growth move, I guess. Yeah. Which is, yeah. Again, I believe success is built on the foundation of failures. Mm. And I usually do failures in air quotes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. The failures are almost necessary, like uh, of some kind. Hopefully, they're not too big, though. Well, I think we need to rebrand the word failure. Yeah. Yeah, just experience that didn't go yeah. so well. Yeah, because failure has always been promoted as negative, and everyone teaches us that failure is bad. Meanwhile, if you don't try anything, you, you're never going to succeed. You're not going to always succeed because you don't know how to do everything. So if failure is almost inevitable. Yeah. So the only way to avoid it is to avoid everything. Hmm. that's not clear-cut and safe to you, not obviously I can do that. And that just limits, it's so much limitation. Yeah, fruition is the word I came up with. Okay, yeah. Instead of failure, fruition. Yeah. Because if you want a fruit to grow, yeah. there's no way you can bypass the other process, which yeah. is the roots and the tree and the leaves and the pruning and the, the pain. So fruition, like, yeah, I'm in fruition mode. I like that. Yeah, because it, it's backwards. We all want uh, instant success. Well, we go to the groceries, we get the fruit with all the trees, right? That's it. So it's Why? We <laughs> we're being programmed in a way that doesn't uh, align with reality. And, of course, everyone tells the stories about how they succeeded. Yeah, without and the failures. They call, there is this thing that they talk about, and they call it you know, uh, failure pornography, right? Where everyone yeah. is like talking about all their failures. Um, and that can be helpful in a way, but it's, it's not helpful to, it is helpful to learn about it, but you got to go through it. I think that's the key, right? Mm -hmm. That's the only way you got to change you or go through it and uh, sit at home at a strike. And then I'm like, I gotta, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. I got to get out of this. Yeah. Okay, so you're Dave Ramsey. What happened? What What was the result of this? Entry Leadership taught me what I needed to do in business, mm-hmm. right? To set up a business without debt, all right? And mm-hmm. how that's possible. And we did that. 
I was pretty well received, so I came back to Trinidad. I wanted to actually work for Dave Ramsey, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, my gosh. Let me work for this guy. But we brought the tools back and started financial coaching. Okay, yeah, amazing. I started coaching individuals, which was fun. You've been through it. You did it. You can tell people how to do it. It was fun. So we were using Dave's model, but it wasn't applicable to the Caribbean. Interesting. Why not? Well, simple things like jokes like uh, going up the ski sled, <laughs> right? Oh, the debt, uh, the debt, debt snowball, snowball, right? <laughs> you know, I talked about this. Why are they all like snow themed? Right. You know, it's because Dave Ramsey came up with this. Exactly. Stuff. Well, I think he didn't come up with it, but, but he's somebody definitely in the publicized area. it, right? Yeah. And then I, I get it because I grew up in Northern Ontario well, where it's minus go. 40 in the well, winter. There we go. But when I tell people in Trinidad, yeah, there's the death snowball. <laughs> Avalanche. The other one is the other one. Yeah. Avalanche. Is, no one knows that unless you're on a ski hill or oh, you've seen it on TV, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, TV helps. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Did you adapt it? I did. I did a few things. I think I did. Um, the like the cool runnings thing the okay. bobsled yeah okay yeah you know the bobsled gets momentum sure yeah because people could relate to what the jamaican bobsled team Car, cool runnings <laughs> right <laughs> i mean i like that movie yeah, it's a great and movie yeah i think yeah i mean they're still going right? yeah it's there's, a great movie there's still a jamaican bobsled team yeah. i think i saw it in the most recent olympics yeah they haven't won in a while i think though yeah yeah but it was like yeah, I just uh, that's a good movie. Yeah, well, we it was uh, we were a teenager when it came out, and probably. you're wearing you know the green, so I yeah. am. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm wearing Jamaican colors. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, I love it. And we can have a Jamaican ginger beer up. Uh, yeah, for sure. Up uh, when, we're, when we're done. <laughs> So your people were more able to understand that you gotta you gotta have somebody weighing down the bobsled. Man, I don't I don't know. Well, no, give me your reference. It'll be like <laughs> there, it'll be like momentum. So sure. you know, momentum is something as you're going down the hill, you build more speed. That's right. Yeah, but definitely how you start will determine and help the ending. That's good. So yeah, you're speaking to your audience. Yeah. Right, and and trying to understand what will help them. Yeah. And so you did that. Yeah, I did that for quite a bit. Yeah. But you don't still do financial coaching? I actually do, do. yeah. Okay. It's very slight, though, because what I've found is uh, finances is not just a challenge. Mm. Finances is part, like a branch of the challenge. Of course. I found that from the podcasting side that it's really the individual, and that's what has brought about your own unique real self mm. and creating a brand of your own unique real self. And that's your brand? That's my brand, yeah. So yours. Yours, there we go. So your own unique real self. Yeah. And how did you come up with that? Well, after having so many podcasts, uh, individuals suggested that I should write a book. Yeah. And then I thought, like, I, like immediately in my mind, bo- I just saw a thousand images of people I've podcasted with holding a book in their hand. Yeah, seriously. And asked myself, well, what is that worth? That's, Yeah. And then a thought came to me, like, uh, right, I've had a 99. And this is me struggling with the book. Amanda is my editor. She's there. I'm like, yeah, Amanda, we need to do this. And she's there, and she's, like, fighting with it. And I'm, <laughs> I'm upside down laying on the couch with my feet on the backrest. And I say, you know what? I'm going to do a workbook instead because the questions I've asked have gotten a 99.9% great review. Mm. So why shouldn't I expand on those questions? Sure to create value to the individual instead of attempting to do a book that gives me some type of value. You make a workbook. So if I go through this book, like what do you hope that I get out of it? Wonderful. Great question. So what's happened is I've struggled with mission, vision, values. Mm -hmm. All my life I've heard it. You need in your business, you need to have your... Vision and values. I've done a couple episodes about that and it's it's very valuable. It works. But why are you struggling with it? Well, the how you do it and the why you do it. Okay. Yeah. So this model gives you a concept where you're going through a process uh, connecting things to who you are so when i had my Mm. conversation with you yeah everything was about how can we connect who is bo and then we delved into how it connects and uh, you agree to some point to some things or you could possibly not agree but at least we've opened up a spectrum for you to reflect on who you truly yeah, are. Yeah, analysis. People don't do this, right? No. They just they, they work in the cement factory. Yeah. And they they pay years. their bills and yeah. yeah. Is that is that what your dad did? 
No. No, no, because he had the side hustle. So yeah. yeah, of course. So he So he was always working to elevate himself. Yeah. But you probably worked with a lot of people who were just Oh my. Not introspective at all. And maybe hating their job even. Yeah. But you know what I've decided that yeah. I wouldn't work with people who I think should get out of that. No, they need they want to. Yeah. So you can't really approach that. Mm -hmm. They have to come up with it. It's like it really is like a, a addiction. I would sit in groups with, with people near the end of my recovery period um, who were in different stages of addiction. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to tell them the formula to get out of it. I would be like, I, OK, yeah, I've been where you are. Here's what you do. It does not work. Yeah. Everybody is different. And until they are ready, they w they can't listen to anybody. It's fascinating. I mean, you just want to get in there and just take them out. Yeah. But Here's how you do it. Uh, the, uh, you want to help, right? Because like, you feel like you got some magic secret. You, you're paying 200 and grand you in debt off so fast. Yeah, you do have a secret. However, if someone doesn't want to access that secret, it's not worth anything. And, and what do you... like? Is, is there anything you can do? You could just give, what did you do? Just give them some information. Say, hey, if you ever need this. You can you ask questions. It, ask questions. Okay. That would get them of to course. open of up course. to ask more questions of themselves. And that's the workbook. Yeah. Okay. So that's what the workbook is for. Yeah. Is so that you're not forcing something on them. It's, they have, they can get to it themselves. That's, I like that. Yeah. Because I, you know, I always struggle with, hey, you know, if they don't want help, whatever, but. You can give them a book. Yeah. You can give them something, right? I saw Dan Miller in action. Dan Miller has a podcast. So so I got circled around in the whole Dave Ramsey uh, tribe, if you would. Mm -hmm. So they had a mastermind group, and Dan Miller is there. Aaron Walker is there. So Aaron is this life coach. Dan Miller is a life coach as well, podcaster. And I start bouncing around these guys, right? And I went to something called 48 Days. To, so it's coaching with excellence, right? Okay. Two-day conference in Tennessee in his barn. Oh, nice. And to see uh, Dan's posture and the way he did things, like it's like he has the answer and then he asks a question. Okay. So we're speaking to you and then he, he it's as though he has the answer, but he would never say, yeah. this is it. He would be, it was like a Zen kind of thing, right? Like, That's so smart. It, it's it's selfless. Well, no one wants to be, first of all, no one wants to be told what to do or that they are something. I love or, to be told what to do, though. <laughs> I think it varies. I what love, do you mean? I love input, and then I would give my output. Okay. But I'm that confident to a point. Sure. Make sense? I, I think so. So Because if, if, I, if you're not confident and somebody tells you what to do, you react differently. You exactly. either get offended or you feel insecure. So my thinking is I have no time for all of the emotions. Yeah. So I'll be like, hey, Bo, what do you think about my podcast? What do you think I need to improve? So you'll tell, you're at, but you're asking for it. That's it. In a way. So if you come to me and you say, hey, Angel, I listen to your podcast and I think this, 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 I welcome that. You welcome it. Because, because you are more I, I want to say really evolved affect, well, well yeah I've evolved <laughs> but that's a little Definitely. bit of a pompous word I guess well I'm not sure about the pompous thing like in this p specific scenario yeah. I have evolved you have evolved in this yes. specific yeah I don't scenario. want it to, mean, it to mean that you're more evolved than somebody else like they have they're kind of like a, you know, an yeah. amoeba or something yeah. that's how it kind of feels when I say it but you're right you uh, have evolved mm -hmm. and which means you can accept well, criticism, and then use it constructively, yeah. or just input, as you said. And everybody should be open to that. We, we're also defensive. I have yeah. that reaction still. Yeah. For certain topics, certain things that are triggering to me, certain things I feel uncomfortable about, say. Everybody has those, right? Yeah, well. Except for you. Well, <laughs> probably not to the point that other individuals have, but because of the amount of people I've listened to, mm, yeah. it has broadened my my listening and the way i approach what is said to me that's awesome like travel like it does that travel too, right? does that we were talking about that yeah. earlier on your show but you traveled sort of you traveled in a, a, a how do I, how would i describe it you traveled virtual in a virtual yeah. people way yeah. you traveled through people 
Like yeah. you didn't actually leave Trinidad <laughs> to yeah. talk to most of the people, right? Or all of, wait, did you all of your interviews remotely? All of my, yeah, all yeah. remotely. But it's all, it has the same effect as travel, doesn't it? Yeah, you brought tears to my eyes because <laughs> there are very few people that really would understand. I think it, like I said to myself, it's going to be like five years before people really understand mm. uh, what just happened with me in terms of what I did by locking into a room, only having headsets on my ears yeah. and listening to all of these voices. Oh, I, it's powerful. It and is. And yeah, I think... Yeah, it's just people stay in their little areas for their whole life, mm. and they don't see the world. And something tells them that they shouldn't or they don't want to. Yeah. And I don't want to say I don't want to tell them that they're wrong, but it feels wrong to me yeah. to to live that. You know, my wife and I we're living a life that is constantly changing and growing and evolving yeah that's it that's yeah. a that's is a good theme right like evolution is normal it should be more normal than we think mm -hmm. don't go for the safety don't go for the thing try to you know prepare follow the dames dave ramsey method or whatever like you know get your emergency fund and all that stuff but uh, i guess look outside think outside the box yeah definitely it's valuable because <laughs> it needs it should not it needs it should come from the place of if you do help enough other people get what they want you mm -hmm. will get what you want so it's really not selfish mm -hmm. so for some reason we're thinking that it's selfish to want more freedom for ourselves when we have more freedom it's actually then going to be shared with others it is it kind of makes the world a better place i feel like we're talking yeah. at a at a different level right well, now Well, my friend i have no idea how you could have contained me to only finances <laughs> <laughs> no 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 absolutely no this is good i'm actually surprised that, that we stayed on finances that uh, long. For so long and yeah. because we you don't need to okay. i just want people to know that the financial journey you went through and then you know what you're doing today and and i think we got we got that yeah so how do people find out more about you? Like, how do they listen to the interviews? The the nineteen hundred and eighty seven. I wouldn't. I wouldn't suggest you do that. <laughs> listen to every single one of them. <laughs> uh, what's nineteen eighty seven times twelve? Oh you got that number? Oh my gosh! Sure. <laughs> That's bad. That's like twenty four thousand average minutes. They're not all exactly twelve no. minutes, right? Some of them are. That's a little bit longer, is yeah. or no? Some are longer, some are shorter. Yeah. No, they're definitely like varying. you wanted to do twelve minutes today, but we did sixteen. Yeah, it varies. So that kind of thing. Yeah, it varies. But the idea is, it's, it's inspired by the twelve-minute uh, conversation model. It's inspired by that. Yeah, is that so? This was a model that's been ex in existence before you started. Yes, this model came about. No, the podcast. When I decided to do the podcast, yeah. I went into a room, my son's bedroom, yeah. and I just zoned in. And these were the questions I would want someone to answer okay. if I had twelve minutes with them. Yeah. So you came up with this. Well, I mean, what you're doing. You whatever can't. happened in that room, <laughs> right? That was you. That was my handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but the power. There's something. There's something. I mean, just, think about it. Yeah. Like, if I said, hey, Bo, go write 12 questions uh, yeah. and then ask a thousand and how much ever people it and see if it gets bored. Yeah. And it it, it, it didn't get boring. Like it, it didn't, eh? It still is. Because I was wondering, because you, you do ask the same, you follow same the same format. Yeah. Well, because I just figured because it was structure for you, right? Because how are you going to get so many interviews in all at once if you're thinking about how am I going to conduct this interview? But these were like, what is it, like divinely given to you? Is that what you're we saying? We could do that. <laughs> we, it's, it's, it's. But did, was there a that spaceship it, or something? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I had like the like the Star Trek it pictures came in upstairs, and yeah. it was like you just heard something, <laughs> and it was a communicator of some kind, <laughs> which is a huge conversation. These are the right? you appeared before mm. yourself. Your future you said these are the questions, which is fascinating again, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> because it would be true. These are the questions that you will ask a thousand people. Oh, I would love it if that happened. Let's just make that the story, okay? We could do that, but <laughs> it, I, what I would say is. It's fascinating to see that the uniqueness of an individual can peer through, mm. even though I'm asking the same questions. Yeah, I love it. That's awesome. Okay, so what's your website? 
Or for that one, anyway. One, two, M I N convos, C O N V O S. That's yep. one, two. So it's 12 minutes. 12 min convos. 12 min convos. Dot com. Dot com. So that's, that's, that's the one. Yeah. And then you're uh, Angel Jones on uh, Facebook. Yeah. Just message me. And Twitter. Yeah. Twitter Not as much there. on Twitter. Very saw, much Facebook. Yeah. Very, very much old face- school. Facebook lives you're doing right now. So yeah. people can go and watch these interviews as yeah. they come up. This might not come up for a month so, uh, or, or, or longer. It's hard. scheduling podcasts. I don't know how you do it with so many, but yeah. just cranking them out, just right? Dump them out. Yeah, yeah, I just I am like I'm gonna do a weekly show, and then now I have so uh, so many. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, that's nice, but I want to get them out sooner, so maybe I will. We'll see. I'll do two a week. Why not? Why not? Why like, not? Why do why, I feel like, like I'm why, weekly? Oh, I'm a weekly. <laughs> and I was to why you, am I like, limiting myself? I, I could, it's like, yeah, it's, and that is what happened. Like, I, yeah. there's an abundance model that you can abundance. pull into who you are. Like, I said, okay, I'll do seven a week, just like John Lee Dumas. And then I thought, poof, why don't I do 12 a day? <laughs> <laughs> it's a big jump, but yes. But well, why not, right? Like, why, why not? What keeps me to that model? It's a, it's a good question. Yeah, why? Well, I'm gonna do. We'll I'm see gonna, when it happens. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. I'll put this out tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. But uh, <laughs> and good. It's, we got to an hour. I was wow. like, I don't know if I can get the 12 minute guy mm. to go for an hour, and we did. Yeah. So, so are, is it making nervous? What the <laughs> hour? See, it's so long. It's so long. After doing so many, like, no, no. maximum Remember, remember, yeah. like, when I was doing it, I would do four uh, podcasts in an hour. Yeah. Okay. And sometimes go, like, six hours. Oh, wow. So, I do, like, actually. You know, it, it just reminds me of when people, um, when they're like, how did you get, like, a million blog post followers a month, you yeah. know, so, so quickly, right? I'm doing air quotes. Uh, they're like, I, I wrote content nine to five every day for hmm. like a year right wow. and that's this is the answer and you're you know it's like wow how do you get so much content you're working for six hours in a day like th- it, i'm drained after uh one podcast i limit myself to one interview a day usually maybe two if i'm like scheduled somewhere because i you know i have adhd add medicated I just don't have as much energy as the rest. You know, I used to have negative energy. Now with medication, I have some, but I just, you know, I gotta, I gotta protect myself. I gotta take care of myself. Right. You know, put myself first. And so I really value my time and energy. So yeah, I try to limit one. So I, I'm always kind of impressed when people can just go and do this. It's a sacrifice though. Like we're, Mm. we're out here to achieve our goals and it's going to be a sacrifice. Yeah. That's a good point. So if sacrifice in a positive way, let's reframe that, uh, that one too. Right. Yeah, Definitely. Yeah. Like, I mean, I just sacrificed my voice to have this conversation in the midst of a goal to have a thousand and one conversations. So if I were to enter into, I need to save, uh, my voice, then it doesn't give me uh, what may be necessary to catapult to the next step. So it's really not knowing all point. all of the um, connections. It, it it just doesn't work the way people say it should work. <laughs> That's what I've learned. Hmm. It just doesn't. And when it does, it doesn't for very long. So it, it's constantly evolving yes so you should be constantly evolving that's right well that's a good way to end this thanks man this was good my really friend. great thanks for coming on my show and thanks for having me on your show and thanks for uh coming to visit me in hamilton yeah definitely uh what time is it it is eight fifteen p.m <laughs> i think it's time to end the day and uh rest and rest yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah Thanks, man. Thank you. If you like this episode, please subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts. And if you're already a subscriber, which many of you are, please send me an email, bo at bohumphreys.com. I just want to know who's out there. It's really hard to know, and, and I'd love your feedback. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of The Personal Finance Show. Next week, my guest will be Boyce Collins of The Personal Mortgage Group. Thank you.